That's not bad. All right, the secret of beveling with this tool, if you've got an edge that you want to enhance by taking a diagonal line to it, is to push the tool through, much like you were engraving on a steady surface. So just angle the tool and pull it right through. Make sure you're giving it a pull. Don't let it slacken up, and you'll get a nice, even sweep of a beveled edge. If you have no idea what beveling is, um, sorry. If you do have an idea of beveling as, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm going to show you what beveling is. Okay, I am beveling this edge back here. Before it was just a single line. What I'm doing is I'm taking the hot tool, I'm sweeping it by at an angle behind it to make that edge highlighted by an area of vacated space. So it highlights it more, it brings the edge out. I do the same thing when I do leather crafting projects. This is a beveled edge back here. It's at a slant going up to the straight down of the initial cut. And it just serves to highlight it more. Another method is to just put the tool gently on there and let the heat do most of the work. That seems to be effective as well. With this top edge here, I'm just experimenting with just barely touching the tool to the surface and really just letting the heat bring it down to a nice, smooth bevel that hopefully matches my other lines further along. That seems to be an equally excellent technique without the hassle of worrying about am I pushing it through too hard and without resistance. So yeah, this, uh, this use the heat method seems to be a bit more accurate for beveling edges with the engraving tool. Not bad, not bad. That was great. Yeah, I, I really like this tool, I really do. And I'm not saying that because they sent me a free one. I really do actually like this one quite a bit. So there's the new stone for Sarah Northman. Whose old stone... Alright, this is going to shake the camera. I'm sorry. It's on the other side and there's a power cord in the way. Oh, it's a kitchen. Give me a break. Here was the old stone. And, uh, goodbye. Here's the new stone. I think Sarah got herself a nice upgrade for this Halloween. Um, further on, I am definitely going to be doing the aging and all the rest because I really want to see how well all these marks survive. And I really, really want to see what happens to the little fizzy bits I was getting after they get a good splash of water and a blast of heat. So stick with me. I'm probably not going to do it this evening because it's almost bedtime and I got me classes to teach tomorrow. But by tomorrow we will be putting some spray water on this, giving it some cracks and some scratches and making it awful. I'm so sorry. Making it terrible. And then we'll give the heat treatment and start our painting. So stick with me. We will continue our journey into Tombstone Happy Land. Good evening, everybody. 
I'm very chipper tonight because where I am and when I'm making this, and I'm trying to stay in the frame, it's Friday, the most wonderful day of the forever. And I get to come back here and make this fun little continuing video for you guys. And, well, last time I did all the lettering, and that was really snazzy, and I've got my sides cut down. So now it's time for the most key element of any tombstone. Damage. I don't always relish the damage portion because after you put a bunch of work into it, sometimes it feels like you're cutting out your heart as you're <laughs> slashing this to pieces. But I'm going to try to do some damage with the, uh, the hot cutting knife just to give that a shot. Um, I have no idea how it's going to go. I just know it's going to be somehow soul-wrenchingly painful yet marvelously wonderful at the same time. So, time for some tombstone damage. And then we'll give it the aging effect. I still really want to see what happens to these side things. And I understand that as this is a video that I'm going to cut and edit, you probably heard me say that like 10 times over the last however many minutes. Sorry about all the repeats. It's just, you know, the nature of editing. See if we can make some cracks and I'm going to compare them to my traditional cracking method here. So let's make a traditional crack. And we'll see which one I like better after the paint. Because again, nobody's going to stop on Halloween night, walk up to this tombstone hidden in the back and go, hey! This crack doesn't look like that one. What kind of crap you trying to pull here, buddy? I thought you were a professional Halloween guy. Nobody's going to do that. So let's make some, assuming the tool is heated up enough. engraved crack here and I'm just gonna get the edges a little more rolled into it so here is my engraved crack down here is a traditional one using a knife a dull knife I'm gonna take up here and I'm gonna take a few let's make another crack here. I can't wait to see how that comes out. They're, they're just, I hate to say it, it's hard to explain. It's like they're fun to do. Just these little wispy everywhere. They, I love the look it's getting. I really, aha, the back, yes. That's right. I don't have to make excuses about the back. I can just play back here. Nobody's gonna see it.
Yeah, you can just kind of barely see it, or at least I can barely see it on the screen there, but I'm putting all these little thin runnels in there. And um, if anything, this might look like cracks on the back of plaster that covers brick or something. I'm not 100% sure, but I really, really can't wait to see how it turns out. Right, this is the part that's really gonna hurt. This is where I actually have to torch the nice little epitaph artwork very carefully. So I don't want the effect to be destroyed, but I do want to give it some character. wasn't too bad. Another thing I'm noticing is, as I said earlier, I noticed all these striation lines along the plastic. And I'm noticing that as I'm going over it with the heat, those striation lines are highlighting with the heat. So, I'm not a fan of that. I really don't want them preserved and I was hoping this step would get rid of them. But instead it's kind of serving to enhance them. So that doesn't have me terribly happy. idiot that I am, I forgot one of the greatest little tools that we've got, and that is the wonderful little scouring pad. Alright, frizzy report. They seem to be gone for the most part. I'm a little worried that there are some bumps in my lettering, but honestly the only way to tell if they are truly affecting is going to be in the final paint job. So there's just no way for us to really know that until we cross the final, final barrier there. And I'm not too worried about it. So here's our finished product, at least as far as any kind of sculpting, molding, and whatnot goes. I'm going to give the blast of wood filler on the sides to hide the seam. Then I'm going to break out my airbrush and or my, uh, my spray paints and give this a go over with some black. 
and get it the final coloring. I will try to fast motion through all that stuff because even though I've done the tutorial on it, it can still be handy to see. Um, but if I skip steps, it's because I already made a tutorial on it. So there we go. Let's do a little bit of close up action here. We'll have a crack comparison for the old style and the more uh, engraved style. And there's the back, which from the aspect I'm seeing in the camera scheme right now, you really can't notice very much about it, but I'm looking forward to it. No light on it. All right, see you at the final reveal-ish with some fast time in the middle, maybe. Yeehaw. Hello again, everyone. I have got the tombstone completely blacked. And it's time to see just what those tools did and how well they did with a little bit of dry brushing. Okay. All right, here is the general facing of it. Right there. With our carved art. I'm going to try to get a close up on some of these uh, cool little cracks that we did with the engraver. Now, here is one of the old style cracks I did with the butter knife and compare that to you know the engravers kind of cracks so you can get a nice lined fine crack or you can get a really rough kicked in shattered stone crack with the two techniques so i want to make sure the camera is not getting the glare from the light above yeah cool so there is the general stone Nah, it's mostly centered. So I can't zoom the camera any further back from what it is, but I will give you a final shot when it's all set and done. So let's do a quick overall tool evaluation concept here. Let me make sure I grab both tools and have them in hand to show off. So here are our tools again. This is the Hotwire Foam Factory 2.75 inch hot knife. How'd it do? It did great at cutting along the edges for our initial piece. Um, a longer knife might be good if you want to go through two sections at once to get complete symmetry. Because this one, again, you're going to carve a piece. Now, if you just eyeball it, you might have some unevenness like I did. But if you have a pattern, let's, let's get in the shot here. If you have a pattern and draw it out carefully, this thing will do quite fine for you. No problems whatsoever. But that really is just major forming. Going through these side runnels and carving up like we did and over, that went extremely well and extremely smoothly. You're going to have those little line cuts, but I made the mistake of trying to sand them, and clearly the steel wool or scouring pad was much more the tool for the job. Took those right out, so you'll never have an issue with line cuts if you decide to do one of these furrowed edges around the side. I am extremely pleased with the engraving tool. These letters were absolute cake to do, no problem whatsoever. I also really like these little fine cracks, and I think when I spritz this down with my water effect, a little bit of watered down acrylic white paint, they will probably catch some of that water and show up even better. So I look forward to trying that. I also enjoy doing it for this decorative roll around the side, and it certainly made doing this little card bit of art up here incredibly incredibly easy so full props for this tool this thing is magic absolute magic in comparison with a um a wood burner or the 
soldering iron. I'm able to make thinner cuts with these, not like the soldering iron, which kind of has a tendency to drop a little bit too deep. And uh, it's really much on par with the wood burner. So, fantastic tool. With the additional fact that you can put this one down on top of your project and it won't burn into it or destroy your art table because you don't have a perfectly good holder. That's another feature I absolutely love about this. Uh, the tip has just got a great amount of control. I was able to actually turn this lettering system into kind of a font, which is something that I normally don't have the opportunity to do, which was a lot, 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 lot of fun. I'm going to do the back real quick because I want to see how those fractured lines came up, but those that's really the, the discussion I wanted to have on the tools. Both did a great job on this thing, and I'm extremely pleased to have received these, so good, good, good tools. Alright, let's reveal the back, then probably do a fade in, fade out as I do the rest of the work because the water effects will take a little while to do. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll call this one good. Put it up for Halloween and have fun. All right, so again, the stage one finished product without all the water effects. Now on the back, uh, I can barely even see them, but these are those little runnel carvings that I made. And if I had to do it again, I would make them a little bit deeper because I'm sure you're noticing they are barely visible on there. They're nice cracks, but if you want to make those little swishy, channely cracks, I would make them you know, deep enough so that after a good dry brush, they'll still show up. Mine do show up, but you gotta be right up next to them to see it. So if you do that with your tombstones, deepen those swishy cracks. Make them a bit more like this one, right here. That's visible. The dry brushing went over it and not so much into it. So that crack is visible, or these on the back, are just, you know, close in texture. Oh, neat, he took the time to do that, and I can see that from a foot and a half away. <laughs> Useless. So, yeah, deeper cracks. Uh, also down here, these two, these little ones are just about lost in translation. Again, I think they'll pick up the water effect, but, you know, 50-50 shot on that. Uh, one other thing to mention as I was doing this, and this has absolutely nothing to do with the tools, this has something to do with the foam that I chose to make this stone out of. This was the green Lowe's um, closed cell foam. It's most obvious on the back. I can see, and again I'm not sure how well the camera may pick it up, but I can see all these horizontal lines. Now, I know on Halloween night when this thing's dark and far away from anyone, no one's going to see or care. They're just going to go, oh, cool tombstone, done. But I can see all these lines going across. And this was on both sides of my foam. There was no way to escape it. So if you go to Lowe's and get that green foam, this was it right here beware of these little horizontal lines and again i am guessing that this may have sat outside and got some water seeped into it and it just started buckling at the outer edges but these horizontal lines that are here right here very bright and will show up in your final project if you don't do something to get rid of them you could probably take a bit of scouring pad and just scour them off um, but yeah be careful of those because i see them here and I don't like them. So be careful off with all the future products that I do with this because it's going to show. The other option I might have is to give it a quick paint with a light layer of acetone and see if that just fuses some of the foam together. But then again, that's nothing to do with the tools. That's everything to do with your choice of foam. So watch out, if you will, if you've got those little... 
stupid water damage, I assume, marks. All right, I'm gonna go throw the water effects onto this with my sprayer, and uh, nice it up, maybe throw some moss in there here and there, and then uh, give you guys a look at the final product. So I'll see you in a few, or see you in a fade out really with a, uh, a better look at it. Hello YouTube! Well, it's finally done. I've gotten the tombstone complete. I've added all the little extra little bits of moss, given a protective layer of urethane. So, uh, yeah, this is what you can do using just a couple of hot wire foam factory tools as your primary. So, that, um, that, that, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's not too bad of a stone. Um, I really enjoyed honestly making it. This was a ton of fun. I really loved how this lettering came out. And this was, again, just me freehanding it. If you were really savvy and had a pattern, uh, the, the stuff you could make is just incredible. And you get the control with these tools to do it. So that was absolutely awesome. If you got a cool piece of art, very, very easy to make. This whole side strip thing where I took sections away, very, very easy to do. And honestly, it just, just, just tons of fun. Tons of fun. The only thing I... I learned a couple of things while making this. Number one, E6000, clear glue, don't put it on foam. Melts through it. I was working on another project at the same time trying to get it done. I put some fasteners in, then I glued the fasteners and I came back to it and the next day it was melted right through. I uttered words that I normally would never utter on my YouTube channel because I am a fastidious person when I'm off camera. Other thing I learned is these cool little cracks on the back, which obviously at this range you can't see. If you want your cracks to show up, make them a little bit deeper. These again will show up great at about four feet of range, but beyond that, not so hot. But I think we can call this tombstone a rather good success. I am going to take Sarah's old, forlorn, depressed, terrible foam stone, which I made this one to replace, and lay it in its grave of the garbage can, finally, as we will replace it with this shiny new fantastic... Wow, that is setting off quite a shine, isn't it? Sometimes you only pick these things up on camera. I... It's almost like blind and oncoming opponent with this thing. So I think maybe a little quick blast of uh, matte varnish to take down the shine will be kind of good. But on Halloween night, they're going to be sitting like this. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's my review on it. Future products in the future. Products. Future projects in the future. I'm going to try to again put some of that uh, glow-in-the-dark paint on one of these tombstones when I get the chance to get one done, but I have a massive load of stuff to do before Halloween and see if I can make one of those have a glowing message that appears after you give this a blast with a black light of something or something along those lines. But yeah, good stuff. Thank you for watching. They're pretty damn good. You know, good stuff. Have fun and happy Halloween.